All right, continuing on in our series on motor controls. This one is going to be multiple stop-start stations. So say we have a stop-start station at one end of the conveyor, and we've got another stop-start station at the other end of the conveyor. Uh, then how do we do our ladder diagram for that? Well, first of all, we need to have our rungs here. So we'll throw in our power rungs. I'm going to arbitrarily choose this as line one. I'm going to make this my neutral, and my supply voltage is going to be 120 volts AC. But again, remember your supply controls could be 2.8, they could be 120, they could be 24 volts. Uh, all depends on uh, what voltage you're coming off and if you're using a control transformer as well. So let's start off with our starts first. We're going to start with this guy. I'm going to arbitrarily label this guy A and this guy B. So here we need to start with our first stop push button. So I'm going to draw this guy in. I'm going to drop in my first stop push button, and I'm going to label that guy stop A. Excellent. Okay. In series with that, I'm going to drop in my next stop push button. So your stops are in series. Label that guy stop B. That corresponds to this bad boy right here. Okay. So those guys have to be in series so that if we break the current on either one of those, it's going to drop out our coil. And then we need to provide our normally open start push buttons. So I'm going to make this guy my first start push button. That corresponds to this guy. Then in parallel with that, I'm going to drop in my next start push button. I'm going to label that guy start B. That corresponds to that push button right there. Now we've got all of our push buttons. Those guys are going to go to our coil for our contactor. And then we'll throw our overload in behind here so that if we have an overload state, it will also stop the current flowing to our motor coil. Excellent. Now, so far, we still have a two-wire control here. We need to provide three-wire control or a holding contact here. So we'll drop another holding contact below here. And then we're going to correspond that holding contact with this motor contactor. So this normally open contact is physically on this contactor. So we're going to label that guy as M. Beautiful. We can throw in our rung numbers here. 1, 2, and 3, corresponding to 1, 2, and 3 rungs on our ladder here. Uh, and then here we can say that uh, this contactor has a normally open contact on rung number three okay totally obvious on this guy but if you had a much larger motor control ladder diagram uh, then you could quickly correspond to the rung number with that contactor okay let's throw in our wire numbers we're going to do one here we're going to use two as our return this is going to be three three anytime we go through a component we now increase to the next number these are all the same piece of wire so these are all number four Okay, go across, I got number five, five and five. That's the same piece of wire over here. And don't remember, don't forget this uh, jumper right here. This is wire number six. Excellent. All right, guys, so that's our stop start station for multiple stop starts. Um, let's see how we physically wire this on the next page. All right, guys, now take a look at this diagram. It looks like uh, there is no neutral available. so. We'll switch it up here. So what we'll do is we'll make this guy line one and this guy line two. So that'll be our controls, meaning that this contactor right here or this guy right here is going to be good for 208 volts AC. So let's start off with uh, our stop switches first, right? So if we're taking a look here, we're going to go from line one and we're going to go over to our first stop switch. So we're going to pick up this guy right here. So I'm going to take line one. I'm going to bring that guy out and I'm going to come over like this and over to uh, my first stop switch right here. Just clean this up a touch. Beautiful. So you can see that I've come in on the left hand side of my diagram here. And I'm corresponding that with my wiring diagram as well, so that everything matches as much as possible. May help a little bit when it comes to troubleshooting, so that you know that coming in on the left is your incoming wire, 
and then going out on the right is going to be your outgoing wire. Okay, from there it looks like I've got this wire that goes from my stop and goes in series with my other stop. Excellent. Okay, then from the, the stop, I'm going to go over to my start. So I'm going to label this guy as A, this guy is B, this guy is A, this guy is B, and that's going to correspond with this being A and this being B. So we've picked up our two stop switches there. Now we're going to pick up a start. On this diagram, it says that it goes to the start A first, right? Well, that would mean that I have to have a wire going over there um, all, all the way over to A. So why don't I start off just with this little jumper? Because I also have to pick up start B, right? So I'm coming out of the right-hand side of the stop. I'm going into the left-hand side of my start. And that means that I've picked up this guy right here, and I've picked up my stop switch. Okay, from there, I've got to go over to uh, my start. So again, on the left-hand side of my start, I've got to have a wire, and it's got to be in parallel with this other start B. Excellent. So that picks up this guy. And the last thing I need to do is I need to pick up uh, the wire that goes over to the holding contact. Okay, so I can pick up this point right here, I can pick up this point right here, or I can pick up this point right here. They're all the same piece of wire going over to my normally open contact. Well, I have uh, two wires here, I have one wire over here, uh, and it looks like it's going to be a shorter run from this stop switch right here, right? And that's the exact same piece of wire over to each of those components. So I'm going to pick up this guy right here and have it go and feed one side of my normally open contact. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go back to my starter, and I'm going to pick up this side. It doesn't leave much room for my coil. Let me just leave a little bit more room for my coil contact. There we go. So that picks up this guy right there, and I've picked up every portion of that wire. Excellent. Okay, from there, let's see, I've got... A, uh, a wire going from that other side of the normally open contact and that guy can go over and it can feed my coil. So I can just do it like a six or eight inch jumper from here over to my coil and then I've picked up this guy and this guy. Beautiful. Okay, from there I've also got to pick up the other side of my start switches. So I'm going to go from that contact over to my start here. Easy now. So let's see, I'm going to have this guy come up, come over, jump over, and pick up that same point. Looks good, and that picks up my start B. And then I need to parallel from there over to my start A. So I need a wire going from here, up, and over, and let's clean that up a touch. looks good and we'll pick this guy up right there beautiful so now I've picked up each of these points as well nice the other side of my coil I now have to have in series with my overload so I'm going to go from here over to the overload again you can notice that on all my components I'm coming in on the left and out on the right from that overload I then have to pick up my return and my return I've used as line 2 because this guy is rated for, in this case, 208 volts. So I'm now going to come up. Jumper across this guy and pick up my line 2. So I have voltage coming from line 1 feeding this part of the circuit. And then my return is on line 2. Beautiful. Okay, once we've done that, we can throw on our wiring numbers if you'd like. So let's get rid of all these guys so we can clean this up. Okay, we said this was wire number one. Our return was going to be number two. Then that makes this guy three. Every time we go through a component, we go up a number. All of these guys are wire number four. Go through the components, we're at number five. And then we said this jumper right here is number six. Excellent. Okay, let's drop in our wire numbers on everything here. So the first wire that we have going from line one 
over to our stop. That is conductor number one. Our return over to line two is wire number two. Okay, then the jumper between our stops is wire number three. Then all of these guys from the stop to each of the starts and over to the holding contact, those are all wire number four. So we've got number four. This guy right here is number four. This is the same piece of wire, so that's wire number four. And then coming over here to my contact, this guy is number four as well. Okay, on the other side we have wire number five. So that picks up this side of the holding contact. Then the other sides of my starts. So I have five here and I've got five here. So this wire terminal right here is number five. So that every one of these wires is labeled number five. Okay, looks good. Oh, I've also got to pick up the, uh, the other side of the coil right here. So this side of the coil is five. And then finally we have this jumper going from the motor contactor coil over to our overload. So this is wire number six, and this is wire number six. Beautiful. Okay, so let's count all our wires in the pipe here. It looks like right here, going from uh, one stop start station to the next, we have one, two, three, four wires. Okay, and then let's see, we've got going from the starter over to the first start-stop station, we have one, two, three wires. These additional wires right here, right, those are corresponding to this, this, just making sure that we haven't missed a wire there, looks good. And all these guys are within the actual starter. So uh, anything basically from here over is part of the starter. So all of our starter wiring is encased in that final box. Excellent. Okay, so we've started with uh, multiple stop start stations. We were able to do a ladder diagram above. Then we did our wiring numbers on there. Then we slowly and methodically drew out our wiring diagram, threw on our wire numbers, and then kept track of how many wires we actually need to have in the pipe. Don't forget, you're probably going to have a bonding conductor in between each of these guys as well to keep everything, all of our steel containers and pipes and boxes all at the same potential. All right, guys, we'll stop there. What I'll do is I'll, I'll throw in an additional video uh, at the uh, tagged onto this one, and we'll throw uh, this stop start station over on the other side.